everyone and welcome to another vlog. So today I'm going to be filming a reading vlog for you guys. I think it was last week that I actually went out on Instagram stories and asked everyone what they wanted to see more from me in terms of my videos and a number of people said that they wanted to see a readathon. So today I'm going to be doing a challenge in order to see how many books I can read in the same day. Yeah pretty much I'm just going to spend the whole day reading. I'm going to read as much as I'm physically able to read. Um, and so the two books that I've picked to start off with. <laughs> the thing is right is like I I have never read more than one book in a single day. I feel like I'm a reasonably fast reader, but I'm not a very, very, very fast reader. The first book I've got is Strange Weather in Tokyo by Hiromi Kawakami, and then I've also got uh, A Movable Feast by Ernest Hemingway. Um, so the trick to achieving your goals, if you have a goal of reading two books in one day, choose very small books. <laughs> I feel like realistically I can get these two read today. Like I feel like that's not gonna be too challenging. Surely I can, I mean, I read Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norell in like a week and a half. Surely I can get these two read today. If I do get these two finished, I'm hoping to also potentially reread The Ocean at the End of the Lane by Neil Gaiman, which is over here, uh, here. So this book right here, I love this book to absolute pieces. I've spoken about it so very much and I desperately need to reread it. However, I have done some very poor planning this week because I, for some reason, shoved all of the stuff I needed to do into the back end of this week. I think because like we went to a wedding on Tuesday and so the last like few days have been us like in preparation for our friend's wedding. And so yesterday, like, cause we got, we got home really late from the wedding. And so yesterday we kind of crashed and I like caught up on video editing. And so today I want to film this vlog Vlog, but I also have to get a blood test today, which is a fasted blood test So I haven't actually eaten breakfast yet, and I'm starving So I'm about to go leave and go get my like blood tested um, And then I also have my appointment with the tax like accountanty people uh, to like do all my tax stuff so that's also today which I had <laughs> forgotten about so like all of my stuff is prepared and ready to go but it's just that I also have that to do today I'm going to be reading these books in and around the admin -y life stuff that I need to do so yeah I'm going to get going now I'm going to bring this guy with me I'm going to go put on a mask which is the reason I'm not wearing lipstick yet I'm not putting on lipstick before putting on a mask because that just seems like a really silly decision but yes let's go to the doctor let's go get blood tested and quickly come home because I'm starving and I really want to eat breakfast Stop. <laughs> stuff that's gluten-free and I've found that the best way to do it at the moment is to use like gluten-free gluten-free flour and then add in baking powder and xanthan gum um, this makes it rise and this makes like the flour thingies bind together to make it thicker like in the same way that in like regular bread, like the gluten is like kind of like a binding agent, kind of like how egg is a binding agent. I don't know. I, I've Googled the things and this is what it told me to do. Yeah, so my appointment to get my blood test was in the end actually very speedy. Uh, so I didn't have very much time to, I didn't actually have heaps of time to like read Strange Weather in Tokyo. So as soon as I get these pancakes cooked, I'm going to dive back into reading it. I only read like a tiny, tiny amount. Okay, this is not quite as thick as I would want, but I'm starving because I haven't eaten anything. So we'll just see how that goes. As I wait for these pancakes to cook, I'm going to go back to reading Strange Weather in Tokyo and try and make some headway in this book. <laughs>
Okay, hello, so a quick update. I have just quickly microwaved myself some soup and made lunch because I am just about to get ready to go head out to my appointment to go speak with the tax people. It's it's the most boring thing to be interrupting this vlog, but I do have to go and get that done today, unfortunately, so that is taking up a bit of reading time. But essentially the premise of this book is that we have our main character whose name I have forgotten and I've already put the book in my backpack ready to take with me. She is maybe in like her 40s um, and she bumps into her teacher who she had when she was in school. He's about 30 years older than her and they form this sort of friendship as they're like drinking in these bars and the story so far is chopped up into like these really like short chapters. Yeah, we don't know very much about the main character yet, we don't know very much about what she does as a job or except for the fact that she doesn't really have a lot of friends, she spends a lot of time alone and so slowly she's starting to really depend on this friendship or relationship she has with her teacher. It's a really interesting dynamic to begin with, she just keeps calling him sensei because she she can't remember his name and she feels too awkward to ask so she started calling him sensei and just like kept going with it and I'm really happy that so far I'm enjoying it more than I enjoyed Nakano thrift shop. Today I've been distracted by quite a few things because uh, like blood test and, and then I went and cleaned up the kitchen after I made a mess and just life stuff anyway. <laughs> I'm enjoying the book so far. I'm gonna really quickly eat my lunch and then I'm gonna go head off to my appointment. <music> home now. That took so much longer than I thought it was going to take. Like going and seeing a tax accountant and doing that whole thing um, is the first time I've ever done anything like this. And for those of you who are following along this like transitioning into self-employment journey, I don't know, there's a part of me that finds this to be like a real like novelty thing. Like it's a really fun, cool thing that I now have to go see a tax accountant. Like it's probably really positive that I'm finding it cool and fun. <laughs> rather than finding it tedious and boring because like I just learned so much about how GST works and like deductibles and like all of this stuff like it wasn't a difficult process it was just a time consuming process uh, despite that I have gotten quite a chunk of Strange Weather in Tokyo read not nearly as much as I would have wanted to have read by now I actually kind of wanted to have finished it by now but I'm not too far away I'll wait a little bit until I give you guys my final thoughts so yeah it's getting a bit late Later on in the day but I'm about to go back and keep reading Strange Weather in Tokyo but before I do that I just wanted to thank the sponsor of this video which is NordVPN. NordVPN is a fantastic VPN service that allows you to browse the internet more safely so in case anyone doesn't know VPN stands for virtual private network so it encrypts your traffic and it keeps your IP address safe and overall makes your internet browsing more safe and more secure. NordVPN is the fastest VPN service on the market. It has over 5,200 200 servers in over 60 different countries. Because there are so many different servers, you can pick different servers depending on what you need. So if you need really, really fast speeds, you can pick a server that's more close to you. Or say, for example, like you're trying to stream your favorite TV show and it's not available in your country. Like this is a constant problem with living in Australia because we, we get nothing. You can actually change what server you're using in order to be able to access that content. Now this is the same for video games and any other content, which is region locked. And it's also incredibly affordable. There are so many benefits with NordVPN and it is really the best VPN service on the market. So go to nordvpn.com slash Jones or use the code Jones in order to get a two year plan plus four additional months with a really big discount. I am now going to get 
get back to reading. Fingers crossed I can read quite a chunk of Strange Weather in Tokyo. Look, if I fail this challenge dismally, at least I've filmed a, a day in the live vlog, which you guys seem to like. But yeah, let's get back to reading. Okay, it is quite a bit later now. I have taken off my makeup and I have also finished reading Strange Weather in Tokyo. In the end, I thought that this was a really good, like, wholesome book. I thought that it was just a nice thing to read. I thought that the, like, relationship between Tsukiko and the, like, sensei character in the end was really like wholesome and nice. I really loved the setting of Tokyo, obviously. I'm, I'm a bit biased with that one, but I really liked the way that the author wrote about Tokyo and I liked the imagery around the city and the changing seasons and just thought this was a really good, nice little book. And yes, overall, I liked it more than Nakano Thrift Shop. In terms of how this like challenge is going, I think that maybe I picked a really bad day to try and read as much as I could. I have just started reading our second book, which is A Movable Feast by Ernest Hemingway. I am only like a couple pages in so far. It's, it's interesting. Look, the reason why I wanted to read this book is because I've become quite interested in Paris in like the 1920s during like the Lost Generation. I really, really love modernist literature anyway. I really like T.S. Eliot and Virginia Woolf and a lot of the writers that sort of like came up around this time. I find their work really interesting. And aside from like fantasy, fantasy literature and gothic literature, this is another area of literature I really quite like. So I wanted to read a little bit more about this time and I, I wanted to read more about Paris and this is the book that everyone says to read. Now I've heard some mixed things about Ernest Hemingway himself that he's like not necessarily the nicest dude around and honestly like reading the first like few pages of this book I'm sort of like like I find the the tone really interesting. Like the tone of this book so far is quite like severe and or maybe not severe, maybe more like assertive and sure of itself. It's quite, this is the way the thing was and that's the way the thing was. And it just seems very like confident, I'll say, which is interesting. Just starting off with the beginning of this book. <laughs> There's like all of this stuff about Ernest Hemingway's life. And then we get to this bit where it says, he was passionately involved with bullfighting big hunting and deep sea fishing. And pairing that with like the tone of the book, how it's like very like definitive statements on things. It's again, very confident, very sure of itself. I'm just sort of picturing like Ron Swanson's written this book. And as soon as I got the Ron Swanson picture in my head, I sort of couldn't get it out of my head. I'm picturing him reading this. And so the short, sharp sentences I'm hearing in his voice in my brain, and it's just, it's made it quite comical. Uh, we'll see how we go. I'll see how I go with this one. I can already tell that it, although it's, less pages than Strange Weather in Tokyo. It's about a similar number of words. So this is also about 50,000 words. Um, but I feel like I'm going to read this a lot more slowly just because of the way it's written. So we shall see how we go. Okay, so there's this bit in this book where um, someone has come into a cafe. Oh, by the way, I'm up to page 54 at the moment. Someone comes into the cafe 
and is like interrupting Ernest Hemingway as he's trying to write. And this person like it that they don't have a name to begin with and so there's all of this dialogue with this guy just like relentlessly bothering Ernest Hemingway while he's like trying to sit there and like you know write out his stories and stuff at the cafe and he's just like super rude to this person and it's like kind of hilariously mean like he's so mean to this person who's trying to talk to them and this person who's trying to talk to them gets like more and more annoying and persistent with trying to like get Hemingway's attention and it's just really funny how like rude he is to them yeah anyway I'm wondering if this is like an allegory for his inner critic but then he goes and calls the person Hal so I don't know if maybe this is a real person and Ernest Hemingway is like actually this rude to people who are trying to get his attention I mean when I'm concentrating on something I don't like to be interrupted either but I'm not going to tell someone what does he say he says you're beastly I'd be glad to shoot you. There's a whole bunch of worse stuff. He just gets really, really rude and it's kind of funny. Um, I will say that there are a few snippets of like stuff I really don't agree with in here. Like there's a bit where he's talking to Gertrude Stein and they're just like, sounds super homophobic. And it's in like maybe like the first 10 pages. So like straight off the bat, there's just, that's a bit confronting and unfortunate. I wish that wasn't in there. Characterization of women. <laughs> It's probably about as good as you'd expect, but um, yeah, look, again, reading this because I want to know about 1920s Paris, I, I don't know if I'm going to pick up Hemingway's work after this, but I do like um, his writing style. I think it's really beautiful and very unique and very interesting, although he, <laughs> he does seem like a bit of an arrogant human being. Anyway, I am like halfway through this book. I am... I'm enjoying it, but it's it's a slow read. Like, it's already getting quite late. I'm going to go make some ginger biscuits. I still have all of that ginger that I bought in the last vlog. But yes, I'm going to go make some snacks so that I have some stuff to eat while I read. Not 100% convinced that I'm going to get to this book tonight, but we will see how we go. Um, yes, let's go make some ginger biscuits. <laughs> So in the end, I ended up reading two books and a little bit. I got about 50 pages into The Ocean at the End of the Lane. It is like 2 a.m. at this point and I am feeling pretty tired and I want to go to bed. So yeah, I think I did okay. So in total, I think these two books are about 100,000 words plus this book, which is I think 53,000 words in total. I read the first 50 pages. So let's say that's like 10K-ish words. I think I read about 110,000 words to Day, which if you compare it to something like Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norell isn't very much. I thought I would have gotten a lot more done today honestly and I think what I've sort of found with this challenge is like 
A, I shouldn't do it on a day where I have like heaps and heaps of distractions and admin stuff to do. And you like, I didn't start straight away during the day because I had a couple things I had to get quickly done this morning before I started filming and um, obviously blood test and tax stuff that ended up taking a lot longer than I thought it would. Yeah, so basically don't do a reading challenge on a day when you already have stuff that you need to do. And also, I do think that I'm a much faster reader and a more productive reader when I'm reading something like that I'm really, really sinking my teeth into. I sort of find that it takes a little bit for my brain to get in the groove of reading a particular voice or a particular style. Because even though these two books are actually the same size, I found that the pacing of reading them was different. This was a slower book, but I had a lot more unbroken time to read it, which I felt like sped up the process. Whereas this is a much faster book to read, I think because of the tone, but I was only reading it in really small snippets because I had so much stuff to do during the day. I was really surprised that it took me so long to read this book during the day, given like the span of hours. But now since dinner's ended, I've had like a really good long period of unbroken reading, which has meant that I finished this, got a little bit of the white, oh God, I nearly, yeah, that's fine, just like whacked this into my face. That's all good. 50 pages into this one, so I think I did okay in the end. And yeah, oh, I should probably tell you my thoughts on um, A Movable Feast. I've already read Ocean at the End of the Lane. I've already told you guys that I really, really love this book, but um, A Movable Feast in the end, beautifully written, really, really interesting writing style. I thought that it was a really interesting insight into his life. Yeah, I, there was a lot of insight into other people like T.S. Eliot and Scott F. Fitzgerald. Although I don't know how realistic the depictions are of those people. Like he doesn't seem to be very kind or generous to other people. Like he paints himself in a very, very positive light, but he, he has a lot of criticisms for, for other people. And because he wrote this very many decades later, he wrote it like a few years before his death, so I think. He wrote it around the 1960s. Um, I thought it was interesting overall. Thank you guys so much for watching this reading vlog slash reading challenge slash day in my life vlog. Thank you very, very much to everyone over on Patreon for supporting this channel. If you're interested in seeing behind the scenes content, bonus videos, being a part of a monthly book club, stuff like that, please feel free to check out Patreon. Take care everyone and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.